Hello. I thought I'd take a look at this um, frequency counter. It's a Hewlett Packard um, 53131A. I've had it for, well, I don't know, probably two or three years now. Uh, I've had it on my bench. I've used it occasionally, but I have had some problems with it um, uh, triggering and not always, um, not always reading uh, accurately uh, because of the triggering. I actually, excuse me, actually more often, to be honest with you, use this because it seems to trigger a lot better and be more reliable. Um, anyway, I, um, I thought I'd uh, take a look inside because there's something that really bugs me about this piece of equipment that, um, that you know, I want to try and see if I can do something about. And, and, and that is the only piece of HP or Agilent equipment I've got that when you just put mains on it without turning it on, um, the fan inside it is running. So, you know, and it, in, a, in a quiet room, it can be quite noisy. I don't know if you can hear that and you can see that it's not even switched on and uh, it has a soft switch so um, switching it on um, obviously switches on the, um, the power supply but but the fan is continuously running all the time so I'd like to see what's inside and see um, see why that is uh, I have since I, I, I bought this from a, I think a dealer on eBay and uh, as I say I've used it I haven't done anything with it I haven't taken it apart so I thought, I thought I'd do that on video, um, maybe give it a quick service and just have a look around. All right, so I'm going to take it apart now and, um, and uh, then we'll have a look once I've got it open. Okay, so I haven't taken it apart. Actually, I'm really quite surprised what I found. Um, this is absolutely filthy. Uh, now let me see if I can zoom in there. It's absolutely covered in dust. Now I've never opened this before. In fact, the um, the factory uh, seal was um, was still intact. So this is the first time it's ever been opened from new. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's really really dusty. If I just uh, put something here, there you go. So I'm not. I don't particularly want to breathe that. I'm going to go and. Um, I'm going to go and um, uh, vacuum that out, out in the garage. Um, now, one thing I've just noticed, I don't know if you can see um, up here, you can see there's looks like spillage. And uh, you can see it probably more clearly in here. Uh, you can see the kind of off colour. And even worse, and if we look at the back of the board, that, let me see if I can angle the camera, that looks pretty horrible. Now I don't particularly want to touch it because I'm not sure what it is. Um, one of the problems with this, this sort of uh, equipment is it's often in labs so you never quite know um, what chemicals or well, that's really sticky and gooey. Um, now the the counter still works so I can only assume that whatever it is it's non-corrosive because if that was corrosive that absolutely would have been uh, would have uh, destroyed the electronics and uh, there's there's evidence that uh, there must have been something spilt in it um, you can see there inside the case here uh, where it's made it got it in from the vent by the looks of it and it's also in the bottom there it's quite hard to get on a camera but uh, you can see a stain there so I'm not quite, not quite sure what that is on there but as I say it's very sticky and looks like it's run all the way down the board uh, a quick, quick look inside you can also see evidence of it here and all down in there yeah, that's pretty horrible. All right, so I'm going to go and vacuum this out, and then uh, probably I'm going to strip this apart, uh, take the main board out, and then uh, wash it, find out what that what that stuff is on there. Hopefully, it's uh, not particularly dangerous or horrible, and then uh, we can get on to looking at the actual supply itself. Uh, sorry, not the supply, the uh, frequency counter itself. Okay, I've given it a quick, a quick dust out. It's uh, still pretty dusty, so I want to strip it down. 
Uh, thought I'd just have a quick look at the basic construction though um, before we before we do that. Um, the main board is a, a kind of L-shaped board. You can see it there. Uh, it appears to be <coughs> connected. Yeah, it actually contains these three connectors, right, and it follows right the way through to these three connectors. So. I'm presuming you've got the front panel's got to come out first and then to get the board out. Uh, I guess the interesting part is the, um, the thing is using a switch mode power supply. And that power supply board, um, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail when I've gotten it, gotten it out and got it cleaned up, is sitting on a sub chassis, a kind of steel sub chassis, which is held in here. And by the looks of it, uh, with two screws here. So I'll start with getting the power supply out, I think, and then uh, take it from there. Okay, so that's the uh, board. Obviously, the power supply was over the over that bit there that I couldn't uh, I go, um, couldn't get it um, when I, when I was with the vacuum. Um, so it's still pretty caked. So I, I'm just I want to uh, before I go and try and clean this, I want to uh, try and work out what that uh, what that spillage is. <coughs> work out what it's made up of. I'm just going to use some alcohol and see if it's uh, see if it dissolves. Yeah, definitely. That cleans it. So, all right. So, I'm going to go and um, I'm just going to go and do this in the garage. Um, I'm going to clean that board up and give it a quick wash, probably. Uh, what's on here? Now, normally I would use detergent and water. Um, there's a couple of things on here that would make me not want to do that. Uh, specifically, all around the front end here, all of these relays, because uh, you know they're they're not they're very unlikely to be waterproof. Um, and if you get water in them, uh, they'll, they'll probably fail, if not immediately, uh, sometime in the near future. Anyway, I'll go and see what I can do, see if I can get this cleaned up and uh, start there. Also on this, uh, this also needs cleaning up. If you look at the chassis, you can see it more clearly now. This saying whatever that spillage is, is in here. Um, so that, that really needs a, a bit of a clean out as well. And it uh, doesn't look like it's... Uh, made the power supply the power supply is just generally full of dust so uh, i'll see if i can get that a little bit cleaner and i've got it now i'll probably strip the board out of the uh, out of the chassis here okay so i'm going to go and clean these uh, this main board up and start there i think i cleaned up the main board i used um uh, i actually used alcohol because alcohol did whatever it was it definitely seemed to dissolve it um uh, quite quite easily so um, now I also tried when I cleaned up the I cleaned up cleaned up this and uh, I tried using detergents on this and and actually whatever it was wouldn't um, wouldn't break down using detergents so or at least detergent I was using so uh, it was whatever it was it was oil based um, and therefore there's been absolutely no corrosion or or any damage to the board that I can see on either side um, it's actually cleaned up quite nicely, so I'm not so worried about uh, about needing a new counter now. Every, everything seems okay. So I've cleaned that. I've cleaned the whole board actually with alcohol. Um, give it a good brush down. Um, uh, technique I use pretty simple: uh, alcohol, toothbrush, and um, just a dry cloth. Uh, I place this over a radiator just for a small while, uh, just to warm it up and to evaporate all the alcohol off, and a quick visual inspection just to make sure everything was okay. So that looks okay. I'm going to put that back into the uh, chassis now, and I'm going to um, uh, put the thing back together. Okay, a quick overview on the um, on, on the board. I thought it was worth just having a quick look and see how this thing's built and what it's made up of um, um, before it goes back in its case. Uh, it's, it's got a quite old it's all basically obsolete from uh, from what I can tell the main microprocessor here is in a Motorola 68331 uh, 16 bit microcontroller uh, there's four EEPROMs here uh, which are obviously uh, they're removable so they're obviously um, the firmware 
and um, that's at revision 3646 uh, according to that. Uh, there's another EEPROM down here. Uh, this, this, I think this chip here is the uh, GPIB controller. Uh, not quite sure what this is. This, uh, this it looks like a little standalone power supply. I suspect this is probably uh, for running the heater on the um, fluorescent display, the vacuum fluorescent display. That uh, kind of looks, looks like that. So it doesn't look particularly high precision, but it looks high-ish current, so I suspect that's what it is. Um, this is a, a Xilinx uh, XC3042 field programmable gate array. So it's obviously where all the fast uh, counting is going on inside there. Uh, these chips are all kind of obsolete high-speed logic, log uh, logic chips, NANs, uh, NORs. And uh, these, these two chips here are AD uh, analog devices parts, again, obsolete. They're very um, AD 96685s, 96687. These are very fast um, comparators. Um, not much else in here. There's a whole bunch of relays. I'm not quite sure what, what they all do, but uh, they're all obviously around the front end. Um, so, uh, and there's another relay here. Uh, some mostly discrete logic around here, apart from, apart from the FPGA. And that's it, really. It's actually quite simple. There's really not much to it at all. But as I say, all of all of the parts, these, uh, all of these, all, all around here, all mostly obsolete. So uh, it's quite an old, uh, quite an old design. Uh, from a date code point of view, uh, what have we got here? Uh, 9529. Week. So the mi the microcontroller is dated 1995, uh, middle of the year. So, uh, so yeah, that, that kind of gives a sense of, of, of the date of the uh, of the the manufacture. Okay, I've look at, had a look, look around, had a look at the schematic, and uh, just just done a bit of metering and uh, to see what's going on inside. They've removed the power supply again, because uh, I've done a couple of little tests. So, uh, this is how the power circuit works. Really simple. So, this is this this is the front panel or the relevant part of the front panel circuit diagram. You can see there the power switch. Uh, when you turn it on, it takes these two lines, plus 12 control and minus 12 control, down to ground. Uh, now, this ground is, um, is Earth-referenced, so it's uh, referenced to the chassis. It's also referenced to these, um, these input connectors. So, uh, ob obviously, it is a soft switch and it is hardwired into the, um, into the internal electronics. The, um, now, these two go to the main board onto junction uh, uh, J1, which is the ribbon cable that connects the display, this thing. Uh, connects the display board uh, to pins 19 and 17. And if we come into here, you'll see that um, they come in here and they actually drive these FETs. And this is on the, on the diagram, this is marked out as the power switches. So this is the connector from the switch mode power supply. Um, so you've got plus 12 volts ground, minus 12 volts, plus 5 volts, and then this minus 9 volts, which we'll come on to in a second. So, um, so the, the switch mode power supply is running all the time. Uh, the plus and minus 12 and the plus 5 are switched on through these three FETs, and then you get these signals switched. Plus 12, switched, minus 12, switched, 5 volts. So this is the soft switch um, circuitry, and obviously by uh, simple um, P-channel and N-channel FETs, by taking these down to ground, uh, which is DCOM here, uh, or yeah, DCOM, the same thing, taking those down to ground turns the circuit on, and that's what powers it up. Now, one of the things I really struggled, I, I, I spent quite a lot of time poring over the schematic, and I couldn't find these plus or minus 9, uh, this 9 volt and 9 volt ground uh, being used anywhere, I couldn't couldn't see it absolutely anywhere at all in the circuit. So um, I've done a, a little experiment here. Um, I'll just show you what I've done. So I've very gently and very carefully bent these two pins. These two pins are the plus or minus nine, which means I can get this plug header on the power supply. Uh, connector on without connecting those two pins. What I wanted to do is see if the frequency counter still works um, with those um, with that nine that minus nine volt uh, circuit not connected. And I'll, there's a good reason for that, and I'll come on to that in a minute. But let's just give that a try first. So I've got I've got the power supply here.
be a little bit careful with this switch mode. All right, it's going to power it up. So the fan's running. Okay, I'm like magic. So what I want to do is I just want to make sure that it's still actually uh, still actually working. I've got a a Sig Gen here. I'm just going to feed in a one kilohertz signal. I need to increase increase the amplitude here. There we go. So yeah, so the whole all, all of the front end and everything seems to be working um, exactly um, without that minus nine volt supply. Now that's interesting. So why am I? Um, why was I? Why was I looking at that? And why was I thinking that? Well, I'm wondering. Um, uh, I, actually, I actually let me just get this out. I hate this design. This is this is really terrible. I don't know. You know, it's the, as I say, it's the only piece of HP kit I've got that is built like this, and it just seems really, really poor. The fan, uh, from what I can tell, the um, the internal electronics um, run moderately lukewarm at best. So I don't think it'd be interesting to leave that run for a while with, without the airflow in there to just to see what gets warm. Um, but the fan mostly. If you look at it, is um, drawing is is actually part of the power supply chassis, and it's drawing air through across these power devices, which is uh, on the secondary um, of the power supply. So these are the I guess these are linear regulators and, and rectifier diodes and so on and so forth. So the fan is definitely giving the the unit some overall circulation, um, some air circulation. Um, but it's also there to run the power supply. So, you know, this this is just uh, it's just horrible, really. Uh, the fact that the power supply is running all the time just just really, as far as I'm concerned, kind of jars with me. And I'd I'd rather it not be the case. Apart from the inconvenience, the fan is actually in a quiet room. Uh, it's quite noisy, and uh, leaving it humming away there all the time is just just feels a bit a bit wrong. So um, I'm just wondering if I can replace this power supply with um, a, uh, a linear power supply, uh, a transformer, you know, one of those flat uh, toroid potted transformers, it's a couple of linear regulators, and, um, and then a very small transformer uh, that is powered all the time, just enough to power a relay to actually turn on power to the main board. I did actually think of, there is, there is actually quite a lot of room in here, so another, another possibility is to modify it um, and perhaps string another, give, given the amount of space, there is, there is the possibility of, um, I don't know, ex extending or do, doing something with this plate to add a bit to it or, you know, do something so I can put a secondary supply on it. Anyway, there's some thoughts there. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. I'll just consider this, this video a tear down. At least we know what it looks like. Uh, the power circuit is pretty similar. I'm going to have a think about uh, um, what I can do with that, if anything, and if I do come up with something, I'll do a video um, specifically to cover the mod um, to deal with the, the always running fan problem. Okay, if you found the uh, teardown um, and peek inside this uh, HP um, 53131A useful, please give it a thumbs up and uh, thanks very much for watching.